Hi, 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 guys. Linjani Makadi Mose from wherever you're joining us from. My name is Samantha Swanda, and welcome to this week's episode of Disability News. It's a disability news program that's brought to you by Endless Possibilities, Creative Thinker Inc., and Science of Hope Trust. I'm really happy and excited to be with you today as we continue our conversation on the International Albinism Awareness Day. And today I'm joined by Jennifer Madiriza. I know you've had her as a host as well, but I'm glad that we're here together today. And, you know, we just want to discuss on lived experiences of uh, persons with albinism, but also we want to kind of allow Jennifer to share uh, her experience with us as well. Jennifer, you can introduce yourself. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Jennifer, and uh, thank you, Samantha, for welcoming me back to the program. So, yes, uh, growing up, I was discriminated a lot, mm -hmm. especially at school. I was bullied to the extent of I would dodge school. I would tell my mom I'm sick. It's either I would tell my mom I'm sick or I would actually dodge school or not even attend class because of the bullying. Um, I would be called, I would be called um, names like Musope, Murungu, I'm a, girl, I'm a ghost. And um, one of the experiences that stopped me from um, participating in class or doing anything in class was when uh, I told my teacher that I can't see from the, board, from, uh, the back to the board. Uh, so my teacher uh, asked my mom, what, what can we do about this situation? So her, um, her telling the teacher that, okay, Jennifer can sit in the front, uh, maybe she could see... Uh, better? <laughs> yeah, maybe she could see better. So I used to sit in the front. And then when I'm sitting in the front, I'll be giving my back to the whole classroom. And people started to make fun of me or throwing pens at me or throwing even uh, papers at me and calling me names. That made my, uh, my self-esteem uh, got lower. Mm. So I started to cry at times or not even go out to break at times or dodging school. That mm. was my uh, primary school um, experience, yes. Yeah, and I just want to know, were you the only person with albinism in the whole school? And do you think that the boys also have like a, a, the same challenge as you, or you think the females have got that challenge and the boys uh, are not, you know, experiencing such? At that time, yes, I, I was the only child at that school. But um, in my family, we were born, we were like nine children. And out of nine children, there was me and my sister who had albinism. But my sister was four years younger than me. So when she joined um, the primary school, it was four years um, later. Yes, four mm. years later. So I was alone. And now when she joined me, I had to be strong so that she could be strong too. Because mm. I couldn't be like so weak and stuff. So I used to uh, give her words of encouragement or just to tell her to be strong, although I wasn't really strong myself. I had to just act like I was I was strong mm -hmm. for her to you know to have like um, confidence, confidence. Yeah. yeah of which she did she had more confidence than me and I'm so proud of her she didn't even face much challenges because when she came people were like oh ah, we had Jennifer already mm -hmm. so the bullying was not as much as it was on me than on her mm -hmm. yeah but on, with my family my siblings and stuff we were all treated normally, we were all treated fairly. There was nothing like, okay, she have a different skin, so she, we, had to, we have to feed her more, or we have to buy her new clothes every day. No, it wasn't like that. Mm. It's like just a normal setup of a family. Mm. Yeah. 